Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how are you doing? Porky here, the voice of hardcore boxing. But you already know that, don't you? Because that's why you're watching. Right, I've got a guest on here today from Midlands. It's Gareth Morris. He's a, is he an ex-border -board control referee? Yes, yeah, Russia, yeah. ex How are you doing, inspector. Gareth? All right, Russia, yeah. cheers, thanks for letting me on, mate. What, uh, what role have you got in boxing at the moment, Gareth? I mean, I'm... I've, I've left the board, like a lot of my colleagues, very dissatisfied with the board. So I, I referee now on the unlicensed circuit. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a referee for Queensbury, um, Ross Minter's shows. Um, I do the ultra shows. Um, and I, I was fortunate enough, I, I refereed the first KSI versus Logan Paul show in Manchester, um, MEN, a couple of years ago. So, yeah, I've, I wouldn't renew my licence with the board uh, some years ago over a number of issues with them. Right. Uh, where do you feel the Boxing Board of Control is heading at the moment? Because a lot of people in the game think that it's going to implode in the next 12 months. What do you think, Graham? The, the, the problem with the board is, is that it, it's, it's an establishment. It's very similar to the FA in football. It's, it's a group of unelected people, old boys club. And the problem with them, Russ, is that you have to be a yes man to get on with the board now because they, as soon as you, you don't even have to argue with them. As soon as you make suggestions, they make life difficult for you. And the real measure of the board of control is they, there's, I'm going to give you a list of facts now uh, about them. They won't change anything unless they're forced to. And before any, and before anyone on the board, like Robert Smith, t says how brilliant they are about the medical stuff, the only reason that you've got the medical controls in now is because Michael Watson was a high-profile boxer and he had the money to sue them and win and bankrupt them. And that, So the point is, which is proving my point, why do the board have to be sued to change anything? They're a very arrogant organisation, Russ, and they need... They need, they need they need changing from top to bottom. Do you think if Michael Watson didn't have the funds that they, they would he wouldn't have got anywhere when he sold them? Well, I highly doubt it. I'll, I'll give you some facts now, Russ. Eight years ago, I mean, we've got COVID now, right? Uh, you know, we watch. You know, we watch Terry O'Connor at ringside, not wearing a bow tie. The referees are wearing masks, but not wear bow ties. Eight years ago. I don't, I mean, even Steve Bunce, when I told him, and he's been in boxing, as you know, Buncey, for years, he didn't realise this. Are you aware, Russ, that the Boxing Board of Control are the only, only organisation in the world that I know of that don't allow their referees to wear gl protected gloves, even in COVID? Now, I brought this point up eight years ago to the Midlands Council, to Richard Vaughan, shocking person. I don't want to give him any airtime. He's never been in boxing in his life, never been in a gym. Right, but he's he, they've got rid of him. He said to me, You can't wear gloves, Gareth. People say, Who do you think you are? So I turned to Dave Roden, who's passed away now, who was the Midlands chairman, and I said, Dave, you should have the option. I, I did it diplomatically, Russ, because you know you can't speak to the board because your card's marked as soon as you do. I said, Dave, a referee should have the option to be able to wear gloves. You know, sometimes you know you're gonna have a hard contest, you know, a messy. And he said, Oh, procedure, I'll bring it up. That was eight years ago, even in COVID, have you noticed? And the thing is, none of them, you look through all your tapes, Russ, of boxing, how many years have you been involved in boxing like me? Have you, can oh. you ever remember a, a boxing board member, board of control referee wearing gloves? Why can't you wear gloves? This sums up the institution, Russ, they're a joke. Yeah, it's, uh, I've never had good runnings with them, but everybody you speak to, they come out and they say they do the best for health and safety and this and that. Well, they're going to say that, aren't they? Nobody goes against them, do they? Nobody's allowed to, because as soon as you open your mouth, your cards mark, they make life difficult. If they do the best for health and safety, why, why don't you wear gloves? Why do referees have to have blood tests, but cut men who, and we've all seen them work in the corners over the years, even without gloves, they don't have to have blood tests. Virtually everything that the Board of Control does is either wrong or contradictory. Yeah. I personally think that it needs just flattening and starting yeah. again with a new organisation. Totally agree. It's going on that long now, 
they've all got their noses in the trough. For example, Ian John Lewis, I yeah. think he's incompetent. Yeah. Right, but I've seen him and mileage sheets, and they get 45p a mile, don't they? Correct, yeah. So if Ian John Lewis is driving from Gillingham to Manchester, he gets 45p a mile, plus 45p a mile to go home. That's not including meals on wheels, hotel, and paid on the night. Now, what we've got at the moment is they're paid from Monday to Sunday, aren't they? From leaving the home on a Monday morning to go into this bubble. They're yep. paid up until getting home on a Sunday. All yep. the mileage and they're paid a day rate and then they're paid danger money and they're paid the, the, for working the sh for the show on the Saturday. Yeah. So basically, the whole package, what is it? About £4,000 each, each person. You know, we want meals on wheels and hotel and that. They're on a good screw, yeah. aren't they? Yeah. So yeah. when you're on that kind of screw, you don't need to have an envelope in your pocket because you know that you want to come and do this again, don't you? When you're yeah. 67, like Terry O'Connor, yeah. no other income, and you're three years from your pension, you're thinking, here, I'll have some of this. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go with the home promoters fighter. There's too much of that going on. Now, it's yep. been going on for years now. Teddy Atlas exposed it years ago. We're not doing anything that nobody else has said, but it gets swept away. Yeah. For example, a good friend of mine, Robin Reed, when he fought Sven Otka, him and Brian Reed they went for something to eat in the hotel at night. Yeah. They fought the Sowlands, the three judges, the referee, and a couple of officials, an IBF official, a WBA official. All in the all in a private room having a big meal. It was like the Last Supper. Yeah. We all know what happened on that night, don't we? Yeah. We're probably the worst ever refereeing and judging I've ever seen in a fight. Well, yeah. Bobby Reed against Fenocca. People need to watch that on yeah. YouTube. Now it's been going on for far too long. Nobody's seen the taking brown envelopes, but you don't need to when you're being upgraded in hotels and upgraded on flights and you, you, you're treated like a superstar. It's nice, isn't it? And yeah. People are taking the wives and girlfriends. I've seen it myself. Yeah. I've seen it myself with my own eyeballs. And these people know not to come around me. I don't like things like that. I like yeah. life. But it's been going on for far too long. Noses in the trough. Isn't that right, yeah. Charlie Giles? Yeah. You, Charlie Giles, I'm on you. Yeah, so exactly. I'm, I'm pretty fearless. I'm not really bothered about any of these shit houses. They've got a problem yeah. here. They could come and knock on this factory door any time of the week. But they're killing exactly. the sport that I love. And yeah. everybody else knows this. The Sky Pundits know it. Bean, Nelson, Macklin, Bellew. Yeah. They know it, but they're all knee deep in it. They can't. Yeah out of the web because it's free gratis look you saw what happened when peter fury left the bubble didn't you as soon as yeah. tell you seen him leaving the bubble peter's walking out for smuggling him out only thing missing with a blanket on his head bellio's coming in what's going on oh i've got covid straight away on phone to eddie and get my fighter on noses in the trough that's called yeah. like i said it's been going on for far too long and it needs stopping. If anybody's got a problem with me against the board, come see me. Because we all know I'm right. It's been going on for too long. These referees, what we've got right now, Ian John Lewis, he's corrupt or he's incompetent, so get out of Dodge. Take the train. Yeah. Terry O'Connor, he's 68 next birthday. He's obviously a blind man. He can't concentrate because he's too old. He's out of shape. Take the train, get out of Dodge. Vic Laughlin, Michael Alexander. The list just goes on and on and on and on. When are we going to see some new fucking faces? When? Yeah. It's the same old A-star referees. Yeah. Look, they all live in bigger houses than Eddie Hearn, these referees. They've all got jobs. 
They leave the money in the bank. They're living on what they're getting from boxing. They're all heading towards a million quid. They don't throw a punch half of them. It's a fucking farce what's going on. And this at the this at the weekend has shown how incompetent they are. But then you've got Robert Smith, who's got the biggest snout in the trough out of a lot of them. Yeah. He's done an interview on IFL. How pompous is he? And arrogant. Yeah. Pompous and fucking downright arrogant. He needs to get on the train out of Dodge as well. Correct. Well, you've had Robert Smith. Consider it severance pay. Take the fucking train. The night train. Go now. While you fucking still can. Ex exactly right. <laughs> exact, exactly right, Russ. You see, with the referees, what you've got, you've got, you've got different. So you see, the A stars are untouchable, Russ. They're the ones who get put up in hotels. They're the ones who get paid to judge and to referee, right? Yeah. Lower down the circuit, you see, and also, you see. Going on about, about these A stars, some of those now I know how hard it is to referee, I, I, I know the score, but some of those make some of the worst mistakes, yet they're untouchable. I'll tell you, the board do not, as, 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 a, as a rule, write reports on referees. I mean, even the FA, which is a joke as well, even that, even the top refs in the Prem get assessed. But the, I'll tell you, it's a fact, the A star don't, they don't, but lower down the pyramid. The, the newer referees who you're on about, and there's some good people, and the Midlands have lost a lot of good people, and there's a lot of good officials left. They get reports written on them. Reports are written by the, by the men in suits of the board. None of them have, are, are ex-referees. Mo, most of them have never been in a gym in their life, let alone a boxing ring. But what, what started my problem with the board is I, I phoned up Les Potts a couple of times, who's now in the central area, because I resented Russ having reports written on me when they won't send me the reports. And I forced Les and Vaughan Les to read Potts. out. Les Potts, yeah, he's in the central area now. Right, yeah. He's, he's but you see, house, mate. He's yeah, I know he is. Police. Yeah, I know he is. Les he is. Potts he, in the shit house. Correct. He told me, here's an example, right? Terry O'Connor once wrote a report on me and there was a rumour and this is the problem where you don't, where you don't see the reports because there's a rumour. I was told that he said I didn't do the pre-fight checks, right? Because when you're a trainee referee, you referee, but, you're, but they do the scoring outside the ring like O'Connor, yeah? Now, I had the board about this. I had that clown Richard Vaughan, who's a, who's a disgrace. He's gone. They got rid of him, right? Now, I got told by Les Potts, you can't question an A-star. And I said to Les Potts, I can question you I like when I've got the evidence, right? I had a phone call two years ago from a, from, from a referee. He's an A-referee with the border control still, right? He did a show and he's got the video. And Terry o he asked Terry O'Connor afterwards about his referee. And Terry O'Connor said, oh, yeah, yeah, all right. But you didn't do the pre-fight checks. And he's got, he's got, the, he's got the fucking tape. For the show, obviously, and if you don't do the pre-fight checks, why is O'Connor allowing the show to the, the bout to continue? The, but you see, you get picked on. You see, straight away, my card was marked because I brought a bad report. I went to a conference with, with for referees, a national conference. It was a setup, mate. Nothing was changed. It was years ago. All the referees were there. All all the the people with the board, the top people, Charlie Giles, Robert Smith, and I brought up with Robert Smith about. You should see your reports because they, they don't want they won't send you your, your reports. They're written in secret by people who aren't boxing people and they won't show you them. Robert Smith said some crap about the problem is people were moaning at people who've written them. Well, that's your problem. And then he said, Well, I can send you the report, I could send reports out and cross out the name as who's written them. Well, you could do that. Was fucking eight years ago. They're still the same. What's the point of writing a report if they won't show you them? They're a secret club. They're, they're, the councils are unelected, right? Peter McCann, who, who Dennis Hobson knows, he's a world-class timekeeper, 30 years unblemished service with the Border Control. He's now on the unlicensed circuit. And I'll tell you why. These are facts. His brother, who was the ex-Southern Area champion, died, Russ. And he ran, you know how in boxing, you've seen it a million times, we ring the bell as a mark of respect, 10 bells, right? He rung the bell for his dead brother, who's an ex-boxer. Southern Area Champion. 
right? He'd done the same for Robert Smith's relations. He'd done the same for Charles's relations, right? He got disciplined over that. So he went by, by these local councils. They're another thing. Each area has a council. There's one or two nice people in, but the people pulling the strings are shit houses, as you'd say, Russ, right? He, he told them to fuck off. 30 years, unblemished service, right? Jeff Hines, right, is a magistrate. He's a class referee and he's a class man. I've refereed with Jeff Hines at the York Hall for the board. I've refereed in the Midlands. He's a lovely fella and he's a good referee. Frank O'Sullivan, um, Boxing Hall of Fame trainer, amateur, right? But he's still in the Boxing Hall of Fame. Brilliant trainer, Birmingham City. He said Jeff Hines is a good referee and, and, and Frank's respected. Jeff Hines has never been promoted to A-star. He's got more experience than any referee in the country, right? He's now suing the Boxing Board of Control because he was told to leave, he could leave a show, he'd refereed, he'd done his fights, and he got disciplined over leaving. He told them, he's told the board that he was told he could leave. They've, they've backtracked, but on the website, they've said he was given words of advice, in other words, that he'd done something wrong. He's suing the board of control now over that. Right? They're a disgrace. They've lost so many good officials. Right? You have to be a yes man to get on. There's, no, you're not... Fine. Yeah? Be a black fella. He's, he's a black bloke, he is, and he's a good bloke. He, but, Jeff Hines not getting on in boxing as a referee because he's a black man. Well, you see, Jeff was told, right, he was told that it was said at Cardiff, we don't want someone like him to get on. And at this conference I brought up about the reports, Jeff Hines brought this up diplomatically. Because, you see, this, these, these conferences, they're all, they're all days out for Robert Smith and Giles. No, because everybody knows you're not allowed to open your mouth. This is what's the problem. It's the culture with the board. You see, the hierarchical culture. You see, there was a book, a book written recent, recently by Matthew Syed called Rebel Ideas. And he said the, the best cultures are where the people at the top can talk to the people at the bottom. The people at the bottom can, can talk, talk to the people at the top. The board of control, as soon as you open your mouth, you are finished. And yeah, Jeff's suing them, mate. That's another one that will be gone. All the good officials are leaving, right? Yet the A-stars, they're untouchable. The A-stars ha uh, have a vote on who's to be the next A-star up, right? That's how the system works, mate, right? It's an absolute... They're an absolute joke. Um, I've, I've got a list here, yeah? I mean, going up this business the weekend with O'Connor about the phone, Right? The last show I did with the board, because they were gunning for me, I left them my own accord, but they stitched me up, right? The last show, I was refereeing with another referee. I refereed a fight. I got out the ring. I sat ringside, and a guy come up to me and asked me something, very politely, about something that was going on. And I answered him. Oliver Jarrett, ex-solicitor who was with the board, he's left. He reported me for this guy speaking to me. He couldn't even hear what was said. That's, the, that's, that's how they treat referees who open their mouths. Yet people, the A-stars, they're untouchable, you know. Disgusting they are. What do you think the uh, solution is then to this cesspit with all these people like Robert Smith, Charlie Giles, Ian John Lewis, all the rest of them, Terry O'Connor? What's the answer to the cesspit with their noses in the trough? How do we get these people's noses out of that big trough? Well, the, 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 I've thought about this, Russ, and the, the, I've thought the best way is what you're doing. But you see, you've got the guts to do it, like you say, same as me. We've no longer got board licences, so we're not scared of them. I this can't is even the get way... a board licence. Les Potts won't give me one. <laughs> oh, they, they won't. It won't. Les Potts is who caused all my trouble. Yeah. Yeah, he, he, I refereed Leslie's son an unlicensed show in Stafford at the Kutra Club, you know. So, right, fact for ultra, ultra white collar boxing, fact, mate, right? Now, the answer is it has to be on the media. Now, I've spoke to Buncey about this, Steve Bunce. I've spoke to, I spoke, funny enough, years and years ago, I was at the same hotel when, you know, when Tony Bell, you, you mate, um, <laughs> he, when he boxed, um, when he was cruiserweight and he boxed, he stayed at the Hilton Hotel at Liverpool. Coincidentally, I was staying at the same hotel and I collared him, right? And I, I collared him about all this because he does media work, as you know. I've told him, I've told Jamie Moore, I've told a lot of people who are in the media, but there's only you, Russ, who seems to have the, you know, 
the wherewithal to bring this up. I'm not really bothered. See, Jamie Moore and Tony Bellew, they still the, Tony's a manager, Jamie Moore's a manager trainer. They've got yeah. they've still got the noses in the trough, they're not gonna do anything. Yeah. This Whereas is the, me, I, I'm not really bothered. I've got a few quid, I'm all right. Yeah, I don't, I don't need any more. You only need so much in life to get yeah. by. You don't need to be a millionaire, you don't need to be poor. If you can get by in life. You can get, you can be very, very happy. I'm happy and content. So this is why I'm going after them. I'm coming for you, so get ready. But I'm right. not bothered about, I'm good in my, I'm comfortable in my own skin. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people who I know in boxing who are saying, well done, I wish I could do what you're doing. Yeah. Because they yeah. all agree. And yeah, they do tell me little bits and bobs, but they, they don't want to mess their own little thing up. But I'm not really bothered. If no, you're, you're not allowed to you're not allowed to speak. You speak, but can I can I tell you how the difference between the A star referees and how they treat the others? Right. This is another thing. This is how how, how poorly the boxing board treat the referees. To to get a board license, this is the only thing that's good about the board. It takes a long time. It takes a minimum of two and a half years, Russ. Mm. In that two and a half years, do you know you're not paid a penny by that organisation? Not even expenses. It's a disgrace. Right. And, they, and, and yet, like you say, you've got the other end of the spectrum, the A-stars, who are untouchable. Right, now, here's another one. David A boxed Chisora on an unlicensed show, so they had the licence revoked, right? They were from Luxembourg, though, weren't they? Correct, Luxembourg, right? Here's another one that's well-known on the circuit, Russ. Oh, there's, David there's A. The book. Da 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 David A, he, he, they both took, the board took the licence off them. Yet, yeah, I'll tell you, there's a boxing board of control bloke who's got a scaffolding company, who's, who's, who's got a board license, right? He got involved in that, right? And so, but he's very, he, he's, he's one of the, you know, one of the untouchables with the board, Russ. So yeah. do you know what I heard they did? They find, they took, they stopped in boxing on a, a, a day's boxing. And do you know what they chose for the day? A Sunday when there's no boxing. You could not write it. You could not write it. You know, and right, I, I've had a phone call and I've had, I've had consent off this guy. He's similar to me and you, Russ. He don't care. Right. Jason Lowe, he, he's an MC in boxing. He, he runs the WBC Women's Boxing now. You've probably seen the advert on the telly. Yeah. I've refereed his shows. He's given me consent to tell you this, Russ, right? Yeah. He phoned me half an hour ago. He's been interviewed in a couple of weeks by Panorama, right? About boxing border control corruption. And he's, uh, he said, he doesn't care. He's going on there. And I've been invited on there as well. And I'm going on there, Russ, as well. Oh, yeah. Right? And he's, he, I've told him about this interview. And he's given me consent. Because he don't care like me and you, Russ. Because we're sick of these people. The way they're treated. Seamus Dunn, class referee. Well known on the unlicensed circuit. Right? Never promoted. The board got rid of him. Right? He's well known on the unlike lovely fella. Same again. See what they do when they don't like you, Russ. Because I, I don't care. I'm well known on the circuit. I've got an unimpeachable reputation. You know, a boxer or a referee or Roddy Duran, ex boxer, I do his shows because he knows I give it as a seat, right? And I'm fair. Nobody's ever been hurt. The board of control to stitch me up. I did a show at Aston Villa, right? And I stopped a lad in the first round who was the local favourite, right? Because I don't give it to the own fighter, mate. I got fined £100 for that, right? Just that's, There's no way I was going to pay. So I'll tell you what I did. I sent that dickhead Richard Vaughan £100 monopoly money. And I fucking... I sent a complaint to Richard... to 14-word complaint to Robert Smith about how I've been treated by Les Potts, Richard Vaughan in the Midlands. I got a letter back saying, oh, I'll pass this on to the uh, stewards. Nothing was happened. I sent a further letter to him um, no, and, he, and he never answered. That right? They try. How can you? How can you find a referee for looking after a lad? Right? And they did. And incidentally, that they, they never. I could never get the tape of that show. And incidentally, the lad who got stopped, he never went back in with the lad who'd stopped him. And if it was such a terrible stoppage, but you see, they were gunning for me. The same show. I got reported for a man speaking to me, asking me a question when I'm outside the ring. What do they want me to do? Tell the bloke to F off. This is the kind of wankers, the disgrace the board are. Yeah, it's uh, it's not it's not good. I mean, not 
a while back, uh, me and Dennis did an interview on Porky's Corner, obviously my YouTube channel, and Dennis got a, a text message of Gavin McDonnell asking Dennis if he had any featherweights that he could bash up. Yeah. Well, at the time, Dennis only had one featherweight. Josh Whale, we'd only just signed him seven days before. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. text back and said, well, you know which featherweight I've got. I've got Josh Whale. Do you want to make that fight? So me and Dennis spoke about it on the channel. And at the end of the video, I said, Gavin McDonald, pick up the phone if you want to fight. Now, Dennis ended up with a letter from the board saying he'd got to go to Bradford or whatever. Cardiff now, yeah. Yeah, they, 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 were, they, they suspended his promoter's licence. Yeah. And had a show pending. It was because of what I'd said. Now, luckily, I'd said it with Dennis there. Because otherwise, if he wouldn't have been there and I'd have said it on my channel or on, on social media, people yeah. behind the scenes would have liked to cause trouble. And we know it were you that grasped us, Steffi Bull, you informant. Yeah. Steffi Bull put a complaint in to the board and the board acted and stopped Dennis's licence, which stops his show until he goes in front of board. So I never had a board license at the time and my name were in the Affy David or whatever they call. They send yeah. an email, don't they, Finn? So Dennis just got his lawyers on it. He never turned up on day. It was a Sunday morning. I mean, you won't be able to get Dennis to Bradford at nine o'clock on a Sunday morning anyway after <laughs> being on whiskey or red wine yeah. all night Saturday. So he never went. Luckily... Dennis called the bluff with his legal people and the board shit your pants, didn't you, you shit houses? But what the board should have done, they should have come after me. Because it's like Dennis said to him, why are you having a good at Russell? He, it's a free country, he can say and do what he wants. I'm not board yeah. registered. But they tried to go after Dennis, shut me up, but they're not going yeah. to the cost. I'm my own man. And Dennis knows I'm my own man because me and him get at it over boxing like cat and dog every other month. So, but this is how sneaky they are. If they can't, they can't stop me, so they go around the houses to stop me. And yeah. what it is, you see, as well, it's the other it's the other license holders in boxing. For example, when Glyn Rhodes attacked Johnny Nelson at a weigh-in years ago, Johnny Nelson's wife jumped on Glyn Rhodes' back, right? Yeah. Lynn still stuck it on Johnny Nelson. Dave Caldwell gave a statement against him, against Glyn Rhodes, and ended up going up in front of the board against Glyn. And when yeah. Glyn pulled him years ago and said, well, why did you do that, you grass? He goes, oh, Brendan Ingle made me. This is, this is how it is. They get everybody to fire the bullets and they just sit back and hand fines out. See, this is another thing. This kangaroo court handing fines out. They're not a court of law. And yeah. keep handing people fines just like that. Where does all this fine money go? Because in their piss up pot weekend away. Yeah. yeah. Listen, yeah. I've been sat in Charlie Giles' company, right? And you know this, Charlie, don't you? And he sat there saying, oh, we're all going to WBC convention. We're going to take our wives and everything. Why not? Yeah. Why don't you come fetch your missus and all that? He was saying to somebody that was sat next to me. And I thought, it's just one big piss up for a minute. There are yeah. all the gold men in the 70s that can't let go, trying to be trying to hang around something cool and get paid in process, food and uh, fed and watered and room and board. That's all they want. It's a load of freeloading scavengers. Yep. And I'm going to fucking stop the lot of you. We need a new organisation. So all you millionaires out there who love boxing, come and see your Uncle Porky and let's start our own governing body up and let's get this shit house lot out. Exactly right, Russ. I'll, I'll give you... I'll, it, it, it's the whole culture with the board, as I say, where you can't make suggestions, you can't stand up for yourself. If you do, you're finished. This seminar, this referee seminar that Robert Smith ran, years ago, right? I think it was in Coventry. There was only me, Jeff Hines, who spoke, and, and a lad from Wales asked about more, um, about getting more, more shows, because you know, they know, as soon as you open your mouth, you're finished. But I'll, I'll give you another fact, right? I was told 
by a referee who's who's also from the Midlands, who's left. He's also re, left left them, right? Um, I brought up about seeing my reports, Russ. I've told the Midlands Council this to their faces. Have you ever worked anywhere? Is there anywhere in the world where the secret report's written on you by people who've never done the job and you're not allowed to see them? Well, the thing is, how are you supposed to develop and know what, what they mean, want? What do you mean there's people that are writing reports about referees and, and giving it to Robert Smith? E every, every, every single... Apart like from, grassing on the colleague. Yeah, well, you see, what they do... No, what they do, um, they, they have them... Apart from A stars, O'Connor and those lot, no reports are ever written on those as a rule, right? But every other referee, B's and A's, every show, every fight, what you see these men at suits at ringside, most of them, most of them don't know a left hook from a butcher's hook, right? But they're writing reports. But the thing is, I want to see that report to see what's said, right? I forced Les Potts to show to show me them, to read them out, right? And he read them out to me with Johnny Pegg's gym years ago. He didn't show me them, he read out the reports. And I'd gone to a show at the HMV Institute and they'd asked Terry O'Connor to write a report on me. Now, I, I've, got, I, I've got the um, DVD to that show and I'd refereed well. I'd, you know, I'd done everything. As I say, you know, as one of the promoters, I think, Law said about me, I was one of the best ones, he said. You know, and they tried to cause me grief. Terry O'Connor marked me as crap for everything. Fair, 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 he gave me. And he did the same to Sean Messer, right? We found this out. But you see, they don't want to show you the, re they don't want to show you the reports. And I've brought this up. Anyway, I came back to the Midlands, Midlands after this conference. I got called up to the Midlands Council. Richard Vaughan, he's gone. He's a dickhead. He's, 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 he's vile. He said to me, I've had phone calls. I can't believe you raised that about people have been saying what's going on about your reports. But Russ, if you were having reports written on you, would you not want to see what's said about you? I don't you? want to see what they're doing. That's what kind of dickheads, they're a vile organisation. And I've just thought of something else I want to raise. I don't know if you're aware of it. Do you remember years ago, there was a lad from Burton, a boxer, John Joe Finnegan, who had a brain injury? Yeah. Right, now I know him, I know his mother, right? She's this poor woman. Do you, do you know he's not been paid out by the board, right? Mm -hmm. his, his poor his poor mom has been fighting for years and years and years. He's he, he, he's, he lost his vision, right? He's um he's, he's now living with his his mom. His, he, the wife and kids have left. He's he can't work again. You know he, he's a lovely fella. They've been fighting for Robert Smith. For, they hate him for years. And they've not, it was even brought up, I understand, in the boxing news a few years back, right? They've not paid him out, right? Still not been paid out. And how long ago is this? It, um, it, it, well, I've left the board many years. It must be, is it, is it 10 years, Russ? It's mm -hmm. got to be getting on for it. You know, they're, 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 they're an absolute... They're an absolute disgrace. They really are, Russ. Um, well, there's another thing I've had enough of them now. And this wee old Connor at weekend sat there yeah. on his phone. Yeah. This is just the tip of the iceberg. Oh. These scorecards that these judges are turning in, they're turning them in for the home for promoter all the time, aren't they, in the main fights? Yeah. Yeah. It's been going on too long. Exactly. But you see, this is why, you see, I, I used to, I give it as I saw it, Russ. Jeff Hines will give it as he sees it. And Seamus Dunn will give it. And guess what? All the people who are like that are not getting on with the board. You know, isn't that funny? You know, but it's, um, the, the culture is, is, is all, all wrong with them. As I say, you've got to be a yes man. There's another thing, Russ, I'd like to bring up. Yeah. Now, you'll probably know this, right? You know where you get a boxer, and, and okay, he, get, he gets done for drink driving, and, and obviously the board are going to discipline him. No problem at that, right? Yeah? You probably know it's happened to some boxers. They get their license bounced, yeah? Now, I've got no argument with that, Russ, but I'll tell you what, do you know what I want to know, mate? Right? I'm not accusing, I'm, I, you know, I won't let him come up, try and catch me out. I'm not accusing anyone, but I'd like, under the Freedom of Information, a disclosure. Because we've heard things about Cardiff for us like you have, right? How many people on the top table, on the board's top table in Cardiff, have been done for drink driving, right? Yeah, because I'll tell... Uh, let the, let's have it disclosed. Because when a boxer gets done, 
he gets done, doesn't he, mate? Yeah. Right? How many people, and I'll tell you, there was the, when, I, when I actually went to a seminar in Coventry some years ago for the board, because I, I, I wasn't just a referee, I was an inspector, a licensed inspector for the board before a referee, so I know exactly how this vile culture works. And I know one of the top people from the board came from Cardiff to, I think it was Coventry, and they got chauffeur-driven. Now, why was that? You know, and, not, and we heard that this particular person has been done for... Let me disclose it. Let's, let's disclose it. Who's been done for drink driving with the board? The boxers have to disclose it, don't they, Russ? Is that a fair point, mate? Yeah, yeah that's a fair point, but they can say that they're not in ring, can't they? They're, they're, they're yeah. not athletes, either. that's what they'll say, won't they? Well, this Robert Smith interview that came out yesterday... Yeah, He's more or less saying nobody can challenge us. You heard what That's, he said, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I, I watched it. I watched it. Yeah, this is the uh, problem. It's no. go on, Russ. Sorry, mate. I was, go on. I was saying, Robert Smith. They're not going to change one iota. The board. No. They're, they're, they're going to do what they want. It's just like every other organisation. But where I think the slipping up is. We're in the middle of a pandemic here, and you know, if people turn off from boxing due to financial hardship or yep. whatever, the sport could fold because it's struggling at the moment. Yeah, it's really, really struggling. Now he, he should be coming out and cracking whip now. Yeah, O'Connor's got to go. Yeah, and John Lewis has got to go. The guy's a calamity. He's the <laughs> Albert Trotter of boxing. Terry O'Connor's concentration's not there if he's on his phone. Yep. He's out of shape. He doesn't look a picture of health, does he? He's in a bad way. Uh. I remember him fighting Michael Monaghan. I was sat ringside years ago. Frotch dropped Michael Monaghan. Terry O'Connor jumped in, slipped and smashed his hip. Yeah. He, he was told then he was no good. Do you remember Terry O'Connor carrying Nathan cleverly back to the corner? When Kovalev were, were mullering him, yeah. he carried cleverly back to the corner. He gave him every opportunity to yep. stay in that fight because he was looking after home promoter Frank Warren. Yep. It's been going on far too long. You need yep. a knockout in England now to win a title. Yeah, You've got to have a knockout. That with yep. Ritson. Ritson got beat, in my opinion, right? I thought he got beat. His team are not going to say that, are they? Because they're, they're, they're with it. So, but I thought he got beat with them. It's not end of world, but it's the scorecards that were turned in. I think yep. Ricardo won 17, won 11. What was he watching? Marcus McDonald's card were the opposite. They were nine rounds apart in a 12 round fight. So, <laughs> yeah. is Marcus McDonald corrupt or is Terry O'Connor corrupt? What about Michael Alexander? He had it by two rounds. So he is, how many rounds is he different to Marcus McDonnell? You see, Michael Alexander slipped through net this weekend. Yeah. Back up to the Tommy Ward, Thomas Asomba fight. You saw that, didn't you? That's oh, a yeah. 10 round fight. O'Connor and Marcus McDonnell are seven rounds out on that one. That was yeah. the appetizer. <laughs> yeah. Michael Alexander sat on the fence and shit his pants. He went for draw, probably because he knew other two would go, which way they'd gone. But the main course, the Ritson one, well, they all knew they had to go for them, didn't they? Except Marcus McDonald. But he's a Warren man anyway, isn't he, Marcus McDonald? But the point I want to make is Michael Alexander, get out of Dodge. Terry O'Connor, out of dodge. Victor Laughlin, out of dodge. And Ian John Lewis, out of dodge. That's four referees, all A-star, either corrupt or incompetent. If you're not, come on my channel and let's have a yeah. look at HRT. Yeah. But the... they're not allowed to speak, are they? They're then, not no. fucking mute. Yeah. They're not allowed to do interviews. Can somebody sit Terry O'Connor down and say, Terry... How did you come to have that car? They made CJ Ross do it in America, didn't they, before they fucked her off? So Nevada Commission made her do it. So why can't Robert Smith, a.k.a. the shithouse with his nose in the trough, why can't you, Robert Smith, make Terry O'Connor sit in front of a fucking screen, watch the fucking fight and show us 
Oh, you got it, 117, 1 fucking 11. Uh, Annoying me, Robert Smith. You had your nose in the trough too long. Cor wind me correct. Up. Wind me up. Um, I, Russ, on the same, but there's so many people now, there's so many good officials that have left the board, right? Yeah. It's unreal. It is an example of the culture. When I raised that point at the, at the seminar, now a seminar is supposed to be about raising points, isn't it? Right? But with the board, you're not allowed to. They just did it for a trip out, like I said. But when I raised that point, I got told by Rob Chalmers, ex-referee, he told me that um, a, a, a council member of the Midlands said to him, after Gareth raised that point about wanting to see his reports, things are going to count against him now. So in other words, they're, they're admitting that they're going to try and do your legs because you've opened your mouth and say you want to see your own fucking report. What a, they're just scumbags, mate. Now, and there, there are nice people involved in these councils, but they ain't got the power rusts. No. The people who are running it. Here's another example. The, the councils can call up referees anytime they want, Russ. You were aware of that, yeah? Right. What do you think they're going to do about performance enhancing drugs? For example, and I don't want to let Dominic Ingle get off with this, Dominic yeah. Ingle's had three fighters in recent times, failed dope yeah. tests, and he's still a border control referee. He's uh, still a sorry, border control trainer. Yeah. trainer. Yeah. Why aren't these people doing something about it? Is, is it because Ingle's mother's on area council? <laughs> yeah. Well, she well, isn't she, Alma? She's on area council. Yeah. So, yeah. I, 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 what, if, what if that were, say, for instance, Chris Smedley from Sheffield, he's not an arse slicker, he's his own man, Chris. Yeah. Say Chris Smedley had Liam Cameron, Mark Benny, and Nicky Smedley, his son, all failed oak tests. Would Chris be in front of the board? You bet your fucking bottom dollar he'd be in front yeah. of the board. So yeah. why ain't Dominic Ingle in front of the board? What if he has a fourth fighter on his watch fail a dope test because it will come oh yeah. it's coming soon if yeah. he has a fourth fighter fail what will happen will anything happen graham exactly Ex exactly i mean this is another big issue we're sick of these drugs in, in in our sport now this is another thing you know these performance enhancing drugs and there's too many you know, getting done for it. But like you see, the board won't change anything, right? Anything, you know, unless, like I say, like Mike Watson forced them to, because he had the he had he had the money to, to sue them, and he and he won. That's why you've got an anaesthetist now at ringside, because of Michael Watson, you know, taking them to court and, and beating them. As I say, Jeff's suing them now again, and I'm telling you, Russ, he's he's a good referee and he's a lovely bloke. Why? Why has he had this crap for all these years with the board? Because he's not a yes man. You know, and, and you know, there's, there's so much that's, that's wrong with the board, but the, it's the, the, the culture, you know, you can't open your mouth. I mean, here you go. Here's another fact, and it is a fact. On my, on my, on my boy's life, when I, was a, when I had a board licence as a referee, I was offered an unlicensed fight by a board license holder right and i turned around to him and said as you know russ if i'd have taken that i'd be kicked out wouldn't i you'd be done straight away and the same person who's still with the board the same person who, who tried to set me up for that fight won't have, won't have his picture taken with an m with anyone who's involved in unlicensed boxing i was a, a, a doing wolverhampton a few years back with glenn mccrory and Noel, the mc ex-board unlicensed now he wouldn't have his picture with McCrory and, and Noel because Noel's with them. And the same hypocrite tried to set me up when I was with the board. I mean, I mean and it's still there. They're just a disgrace, mate. It's an old boys club like the FA in football. They're another lot, Russ. It was a shame we couldn't do something about them as well. No, they will run that VAR. Oh, yeah. You see, the, the FA, you know, all this crap they're doing, the FA about... Um, about against discrimination. The FA are the most discriminatory body, right? They're, they're the most ageist body going, right? I, I was at a boxing show in Luton two years ago, right? This is an aside, mate, but it's relevant because it's all to do with that, who, who, who has power in these organisations. I was at a boxing show in Luton two years ago and one of the trainers was, I used to, was a football referee. 
I used to be a semi-pro football referee as well. I was, I was a football ref, and that was helping me getting some money when I was, when I was working through the board as a trainee, because I don't pay you nothing as a trainee referee. And this guy, he was a level four football referee, and, and the head bloke at the FA said in a meeting, there's no point, any of you have been in this room over 40, because you're clogging up the system for the youngest people. Well, that's discrimination. That's against the law. And do you know something else? Have you noticed on the Prem, the football, not one player ever gets sent off for, for abusive language to a referee. And they speak to the referees like shit. And I'll tell you why. Because the FA tell them not to. Because they're right. just like the border control, mate. Snouts in the trough, mate. They don't want to rock the boat. They're a joke, you know. But this board, it's been a long time coming. But uh, there's, 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 uh, there's, a, there's, a, there's a lot going on, Russ, at the moment. It's not just Jeff Hines. There's, there's, uh, there's other people. There's, um, there's investigations. I, as I say, I've, I've been told, I can't say it yet, but the board have been investigated by um, criminal investigations. As well. There's things that might be, I've heard, might be going on, mate. You know, people are coming for these. They're looking at them now. Because we're sick of them, and well, they've a lot of. Told, right, the the board is it a lo limited company or a some? It's a limited company, company, yeah. But they're not allowed to. Uh, a lot of the things they've been doing for the last so many years have been illegal because. Yeah. But, but they're not. They've not been. They're not been letting people know. For example, fining people. They're not allowed to do that because nobody's entered yeah. into a contract with them for that, have they? Yeah, I wouldn't pay it. I sent them a not hundred pound monopoly money. I did. So all you people who keep getting fines off boxing board and control, tell them to fuck off. Yeah, exactly right. Buy the TV license. You don't have to have a TV license. You have seven words when they knock on your door. You say, "Am I obliged to talk to you?" They say no, and they go and they put a cross on a sheet, and they never come back to your house again. Yeah, but they're not going to let you know that, are they? The seven words. Yeah, I have to find that online. And it's like the yep. border control. They send you the fine, 100 quid. Like Billy Joe Saunders, he's had under, over 100 grand in fines and he's paid them all. But Billy didn't have to pay him if he didn't want. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yep. But it's an, elite, it's an load of officials that have elected themselves on without the vote of the people, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. It's like the councils. Each council runs the area. They're unelected people. So what happens is you get one or two nice people in there, but they've not got the power, right? And but a lot of them, you get people with the power, as I say, they're, they're causing trouble and they'll get people like them in as well. You know, so it's an unelected body. They can call you up any time. You know, it's an absolute joke. Absolute joke. You know, oh, I'm so glad. We're all glad we've left them, Russ. You know, they're a disgrace. They really are. Yeah. All right, then. well, listen, thanks for coming on, Graham. You've been a star. Thanks, thanks, Russ. Much appreciated. Anybody you know who wants to come on, they're more than welcome to have your say, because we, we believe in a democracy at Porky's Corner. Yeah. Come on here, say what you want. If anybody's got a problem, they can take me on. I'll front it all out. Brilliant. All right? Yeah, you're doing a great job. Thanks, Russ. Thanks very much. All the best, Graham. And to you, mate. Thanks, you mate. mate. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Cheers. Bye. Well, that was Graham Morris, former board referee uh, from Midlands. I enjoyed his company. I quite like him, actually. He loves his boxing, just like me. And we only want what's best for the sport. Now, people might say, Porky, you're being harsh. What? Being harsh? How am I being harsh? People are getting knocked about in a ring. And it's not fair. There's people, we have advantages when judges, judges' cards are handed out and it's got to stop. So I'm making a stand. It's something I believe in. It's something I'm passionate about. Like I said, I'll say it before and I'll say it again. If anybody's got a problem with anything we say on this channel, come see me. I'm not hard to find. All right, peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. Thank you for liking and subscribing and leaving a comment and sharing the video. Thank you.